You're about to witness now here in our theater the stirring moment in the big hit musical, Avita, where Avita Perone sings to her nation about her, her life and her sadness. And it's done impeccably by a gifted artist, a great voice and a lovely actress uh, as she stars in Avita each night. Would you welcome Patti Lapone?
We'll come back with that. <laughs> Certainly surrounded with a lot of pretty hair here all day. <laughs> Lots of it. Can I point something out personally to you? I noticed it today when you came in and rehearsed, and I was way up in the back of the auditorium. Applause makes you very happy. When you sang today in rehearsal, all the technicians, everybody who works here applauded for you, and you laughed. Yeah. And right now, when the audience gave you that resounding reception, <laughs> you laughed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you're not used to applause all your life, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I laughed this afternoon because I thought it was funny that they were applauding. Not that They I, don't always not that applaud. I, oh, oh. I rehearse I thought it was a here a lot. And, uh, <laughs> but when you hear and see in our theater what is a very moving performance in another theater, they know. Well, applause is, I, is this actor's barometer yeah. as how well I did. Um, because it's, I, my performance is for the audience. Right. They, they've paid their money. It's their entertainment. They did and they pay let their me know. money here today? Well, you know. Are you they know. keeping something from me? <laughs> You know, when, when, you're, when, when, you're on your, when I'm on the stage, um, at the end of the show, it's, that's the barometer for me as to how well I did, uh, how, uh, if I've reached them. Uh, because it's I heard your applause last the audience. Saturday night, and I never heard anything well, it, like the, show, the applause. The, the show gets it. Oh, the show. It's a most stunning show. <clears throat> I mean, it really is uh, Thank you. breathtaking, it's, it's and you're terrific, yeah. and, Thank uh, you. and all of your... <laughs> co-stars and workers yes, there. It's an excellent show. The cast of it has been pointed out, though, that the singers who have played Evita have not had the good vocal luck that you have had. It's evidently been uh, uh, devastating to a lot of singers who have done it on the road and in yes. other countries. Yes, and it was devastating to me, too, and I approached someone in the company. Uh, his name is David Bosberg, and he's a tenor. And uh, it's because it's a rangy score. It just shoots up and down. Uh, uh, each note, just up and down, from a D to a high E. And if, if you haven't got a solid technique, you can... I did. I lost my voice on the road. Yeah, how do you, you... You sing in the show and you're down at La Mouche playing it in a nightclub well, at that's, night. Well, that's different because that's sort of... I, my, my social life is incredibly restricted in order to go on six nights a oh, week. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but that's the last uh, vestige of energy. I go down on Saturday, because I have Sunday off. Yeah. So I go down Saturday night, and I sing my little heart out. I get all the energy off. Yeah, but you've also uh, been singing the national anthem at the Rangers. Yeah. At the Rangers. <laughs> they won. Yeah. They won. <laughs> <laughs> they won. They won. And they're playing tonight. Yeah, who is it? Come on, tonight. confess. Is it Duguay? It's what Duguay. Huh? It's what Duguay. It's what Duguay. Yeah, the big star. No, it's the team. It's the team. Oh, it's the team. It's the Ranger team. The whole team, huh, Patty? The whole team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a girl in this town that isn't after Duguay down there? He even plays without a helmet, so... And all the guys <laughs> protect him so he won't get his face hurt. <laughs> okay? A lot of them play without helmets. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, now I think there's a rule now that you have to play with a helmet if you're coming into the league, but... Uh, some of the best skaters and some of the best hockey players, Guy Lafleur of the Montreal Canadian, Canadians, he doesn't wear a helmet, and uh, he looks beautiful without his helmet. You know some of them look silly with their helmet. You know your hockey, don't you? I like hockey, yeah. You're liable to get voted Miss Puck of the Year, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That'd be fun. What'd you find out about Evita Perot? You must have done incredible research before you ever approached the part. Yes, I am. Um, you like her or you hate her? No, well, see, now, my view of Eva Peron is strictly theatrical. Right. I have to perform within the framework of the text. That's my only responsibility. I don't have to write a, a thesis on the woman, or I, I'm, I'm not into politics. And because I have to play her every night, I have to like her. Because if I didn't like her, the audience wouldn't like her, and right. it would be two hours of boredom. But the battle is eternal. I mean, you can talk mm -hmm. to Argentinians today, and they will say she is the greatest exactly. woman the world exactly. has ever known. Others will say she was a demon. Exactly. So I can't portray, um, I, I, I try to walk the line, because it's clear in the text. She, for 80% of the, the, the two hours, say that she says that she was a terrible woman. 
what I try to do is present a woman in a given situation and how she accomplished what she accomplished. And the text surprised me with, with, uh, uh, with the nastiness of the woman when she strips the aristocracy and the actress hasn't learned the lines in the second act. She strips the aristocracy and they are now one of the poor, or many of the poor. Um, I, don't, I don't have to do anything else except just be responsible to what they've written. I don't think Eva Peron was an evil woman. I don't think that we are born evil. I think that the woman accomplished uh, a great deal in a period when women could not. I mean, and, and especially in a country that, that uh, in, invented the word macho. Right. There, the uh, Argentinian government up to that point had been run by the military. It was still being run by the military when she was in power because Juan Perón was a general. But Evita was as powerful as Juan. And what she did was she aligned herself with the working class, which was the first time that the working class of Argentina had a voice in their government. So she alienated the two factors that had run her country to that point, the aristocracy and the military. Now, she may have been more ruthless than the military. Um, and she was called Juan's hatchet woman. She did remove people when they got in the way. But I, what I don't think she did is change the politics of the country. I think she simply learned the game and played the game the way it was being played. Um, everything I've read about Eva Peron, they say the exact same thing. All the books that were written before Evita came out, that she was a fascist whore, a Nazi bitch. Right. They all say that. But that's somebody's impression. And then when Eva Peron wrote about herself, she didn't write about herself. She wrote about Peron, and it, it's a book on Peronist propaganda called uh, La Razón de Mi Vida, I believe, but it's the title that's been re-released as Evita by Evita. She does not defend herself. She simply says, I am this way because of Peron. And, and now people are coming out with books that are saying, well, you know, she didn't do so badly, this, that, and the there other There are still thing. orphanages, hospitals, everything down there with her name. Actually, a lot of it, it was destroyed. A lot of it was the, the children's village she built for, um, I sound as though I'm, I'm pro Eva, um, and I am to the extent that I must play her every night. I'm, I don't know anything about politics at all. But she built a, a tiny village for, for children that didn't have anything. And then when she died and Ferron was thrown out of power, the new, the, government, the new government destroyed that little village for children. So, I mean, you know, what's the dip? You know, the government came in and they, 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 they did the exact same thing Ava was doing. I think that. Now but, I'm going to get hate mail. Like, no. uh, I don't know. See, I... But what we'll get is that continuing brilliant oh. performance. You're oh, wonderful in it. Right? <laughs> and I have to get you to the theater right now because you have a curtain. Yeah, I do. But thank, thank you, Amelia. Patty LaPalm, Evita. <laughs> consideration paid for by the following. I'm proud to say this lady is a dear, dear friend of mine and has been for a long time. She is a wonderfully witty and a wise actress. Currently thrilling New York audiences with her one-woman show entitled Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein, and I see it has been recorded for posterity in this album. But she's here right now. Here's Pat Carroll. <laughs> like the angel Gabriel. No, darling, I'm a gray lady at St. Vincent. Are you? <laughs> How are you, Mark? Well, I'm I terrific. haven't seen you in a couple of years. What I have you been know. doing? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no shows, no... no. I've been on vacation for two Can't years. Look at you. And look what you've been doing. Isn't for how long wonderful? now? Well, it will be a year... June 6th. It's the longest I've ever run in anything. Merv, I am so grateful. But it's not exhausted. Oh, not exhausted. Happy, it feeds grateful. you back. It yeah. feeds you back. I've never done a one-person show before. And the fascinating thing is, our director, Milton Moss, said to me something while we were rehearsing. Yeah. I said, Milton, I've never done this. I've worked in saloons, you know, where you stand up and you perform and you do a song. But I said, what, what do I do about other actors? I'm going to miss them. He said, the audience is the other actor. 
And I want to tell you, those audiences are doing hell of a performance out there every night. <laughs> They're marvelous. I've been telling Miss Miller that for years. I said, well, she's her own right. show. She does right. her own woman. That's <laughs> Miss Miller. Yeah. But it's an exciting thing. And you're living back in New York, aren't you? Yes. I never knew if I approved personally of you moving to California. Why? Well, I never thought of you in California terms. See, my association you with you... You thought of me more like an avocado tree. No, oh, I never yeah. did. I always thought of you as New York. Because that's when Isn't I... Isn't that funny? I always thought of you as New Jersey. Oh, yeah? Right. <laughs> hey, it's right. And don't think for a minute I don't still have my farm in New Jersey. I was Jersey. going to ask you Yay. about that. Yay! Are those those people that owe me money? <laughs> Listen, you what do bet. you think of this beautiful theater? Isn't it Vivian oh, Beaumont? Is this the Gorgeous? perfect Isn't theater like in the world? Yeah. Is it marvelous? Are you going to take it away with you back yes, to California? Yes, it's going back. We just fold it up and away it goes. What do you think about the reception of the audiences here in New York? You miss that, don't oh, you? Oh, You miss that, that, that huh? Exciting. Aren't they marvelous, the audiences Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They love you. And they love you. Do you know what I do? I record every night their opening applause and take it back to California, play it around the house. <laughs> when I get up in the morning, I press on the New York audience. Hey! And I get up out of bed. And May I have orange juice, fruit. please? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I could do another track for you. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> wouldn't do that, don't you? Oh, don't do that, do. We used to get you. in trouble all the oh, time. Oh, we used to have fights. Oh, we used to put them on. But it's but a new me. It's a new me. Is it a new me, new me? Yeah. yeah. Where are you living here? I don't ride motorcycles anymore. Do anything. Have you given that up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what now about I'm the roller skateboards? Skates. Uh, <laughs> roller skates. Where are you living, Pat? I live down in the village because the well, theater, uh, the Provincetown Playhouse, a is village down in person. Village. Yes, I am a village person. And would I you like to get with the village teacher. people? This would look terrific with them. Yeah. <laughs> I wear it every day. This Do is you? my regular garb. I didn't come here dressed. Are you uh, kidding? With the pearls. For Merv Griffin, I dress. <laughs> with the pearls. You have to be kidding. The can you, pearls? Can you do Are you the kidding? I eat swing these. It? Sure, I can. can you? Let's see you do it. You're going to do it. Now, I must say, I stole this from Mistress Beatrice Lilly. Who, did, who was the, who was the master of the works. old pearls? Look. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> now, just a minute. I'll pick that. You yeah. don't have to help. Oh, all right. <laughs> Little grab here and there. Huh? Are you doing it? Just a minute. All right. Don't get pushy. <laughs> Something very surprising happened in the back. In the back? Yeah. Back all yeah. It's kind of like a parachute from a 747. Isn't it? <laughs> Merv, undo me back there. Yeah, I don't know caught. what to do, though. Watch it, Merv. Wait a minute. <laughs> But you're I think sitting I'm in on what I have to pull up. Oh, well, then Move let me forward. There it is. Okay. God bless America. Right, now, now we do. <laughs> Better, folks? Huh? Better? Keep the boot. Yes. Wait a minute. I did it wrong. <laughs> Hail Mary Full Grace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back after this message. <laughs> Madeline Kahn is just telling Pat Carroll as she was down there to see the show. Yes. Yeah. But you've had exciting guests in that audience. Oh, haven't you? well, besides, I didn't know you were there, Madeline. I'm sorry. Oh, I wish well, you'd come back. Well, I slipped in with friends. I admire you very oh, much as an actress, and I would have loved to have seen you. But last Friday night, Sir Alec Guinness came. And this was after the Academy. Now, I have adored. Sir Alec Guinness since the 50s when all of those divine films. I've never missed, missed one movie oh, he's ever made. he's such an extraordinary actor. And he came to see the show with that handsome English director, Peter Glenville, who looks like the young Olivier. I mean, he's gorgeous. And Sir Alec came backstage and I was really, I was kind of palpitating of the heart. I was yeah, very nervous. Yeah. And he said, my dear, I must, I said, Sir Alec, I want to congratulate you for the wonderful. He said, please don't congratulate me. I want to, well, we stood there for five minutes. I said, you congratulate No, 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 no I'll, I'll congratulate you. No, you'll congratulate He was so fine. I finally said, Sir Alec, do you think that this would run in London? Would it do well? He said, oh, don't be damn silly. You know it would. He's so wonderful because he cuts all the baloney. You know, he yeah, says, yeah. don't do that. Don't ask for more compliments. Yeah. Just do it straight out. Wonderful man. I so you're going to take it to Europe, aren't you? We're going to go to London. Next We're going to go. You're going to go. Will we meet there? Of course. Will we have fish and chips fish and all and that? Fish and chips, everything together. All right, darling. We'll, right. we'll broaden our A's. Right, right. Mine is broadened already. You'll just have to work. <laughs> But I think we're going there next summer for two or three months, probably July and August, and then I think we're doing all the festivals 
in Europe. Other celebrated folk who've been in that audience to see you down there? Uh, Catherine Hepburn was there our opening night at Provincetown, and the audience was not watching the show. They were watching Miss Hepburn. Everything she did. That's was a like problem. That when yes. you have a celebrity when in the When you audience. have a celebrity. Yeah, when yeah. you come to see it, wear a long wig. No, no, I'm going to stand I'm... up through the entire show so that you'll think you're having a standing ovation through the entire thing. I will stand That's in the middle That's so good of you. I'm going to give you such a hit, Murphy, <laughs> and you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. You've given it. us one hit all oh, over. Oh, God bless you. What is the humor of Gertrude Stein? Well, you know, it's... that's one of the things I think a lot of people have been fighting not to come see the show because most people, we've made a survey at the theater, uh, only 85% of the people who come to the theater know anything about Gertrude Stein or have ever read anything of hers. But I knew this in the beginning. I selected the lady because I thought her life was vibrant. There are many actresses who do readings right. for Miss Stein's work. She was an experimental American writer who lived in Paris for many years as an expatriate. But I think her life was the creative thing. And in discussing it with the young playwright, Marty Martin, who I think has done a beautiful script, uh, we said, let's never assume that anyone comes to the theater knowing a thing about Gertrude Stein. Nothing about her writings, nothing about her life. Let's just tell this story about this woman that we think was indomitable, who had courage, who stuck with her guns and achieved no success till she was 58 years old. I mean, it was like Alberta Hunter here. You know this marvelous woman of 85 years who comes out here with the vitality of all the worlds. Gertrude Stein was like that. She had vitality. She had the, the force of life. Young people loved her, because in 34, when she came here on a lecture and college tour, a lot of the young people were quoted as saying, she turned their minds around, not because of what she said, as because of that magnificent life force in her. Right, right. And I think that's what Marty Martin and I have tried to get at in the play. And I, I Give us some examples of her wit. Well, uh, one example What'd you of, say about, about Oakland, wit. California? Well, that marvelous quote about Oakland after she visited there in 34, that's where she'd grown up. She said, there is no there there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could say that about Bayonne, New Jersey. Now, don't get sensitive. <laughs> But when she was here in 34, and one of the people who were interviewing her, and she, was, she spoke wonderfully well, you know? A lot of her writing might have been repetitive, but this was the experimental phase in which she was involved. So she was parodied here in America, by, and most people would know her as a from rose, A Rose is a rose, rose is a rose. rose. So she was mocked and parodied. But when she came here and was interviewed, this one reporter was so taken with her charm and her vitality, and he said, Miss Stein, why don't you write the way you speak? And she said, young man, why don't you read the way I write? <laughs> huh? Kazumbi, the old lady knew where she was at. <laughs> but her entire life was built on truth, reality. And I think that's what we've tried to do in the play, and I think it would be up to Madeline, because I can't describe the play, Mark. I do it every night. I can't describe it, because what happens in it is a connective between the audience and this character of Gertrude Stein. And as Patti Lapone said about Evita, I have no convictions, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a pedant, about Miss Stein's work as an author. I have tremendous conviction about the courage of her life, so that's what I think about every night, this wonderful courage of this human being who lived on this planet Earth and who gave forth this marvelous vitality, this tremendous feeling, and the young people who come to the theater come back and their eyes are sparkling because our young people today don't have any heroes. They don't have any heroines. They don't have anybody to look up to, to say, yeah, that's the way it should be. That's the way life should be. It's all down. Everything's down and negative. So it's down, make it come up. Yeah. Don't just sit there and wallow in it. And I think Gertrude Stein was like that. She never let any of the hurdles get in the way. She went over them, she went around them, or she went through them. Good. But she was indomitable, and I think that's what we all need today. And don't miss Pat Carroll and Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein, Provincetown Playhouse, Greenwich Village. I have to get you to the theater right now. Right now. Pat Carroll. Thank you. 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 We'll be right back. Alberta Hunter will sing for you. Hi, hi, hi.